I'm here with John Robeson, author of Look Me in the Eye and Be Different. Uh, thanks for joining me. Well, What brings you to INFAR this year, John? Well, I, I serve on some of the committees for um, INSAR, the group that organizes INFAR, and um, I serve on science boards that review research that uh, we might want to fund. And MFAR is the largest gathering in the world of autism researchers. It's the place where I have the greatest opportunity to look at research that's uh, just being publicized and, and also talk to scientists about what they want to be doing next. So it, it's a, a wonderful place to be if you're involved in autism science. That's what I'm here for. Awesome. Um, I was going to ask you about the technology demo because I noticed that you were looking at a lot of the uh, exhibits over at the technology demo this morning. Well, the technology thing is, um, is sort of a, a new area where we had a, a competition, actually, where we invited uh, people who were not really autism scientists, they're grad students, to uh, compete for prizes to for the best product or idea to help remediate communication disability. And, and we sort of left it uh, open for the participants to interpret communication disability any way that they wanted. Okay. Um, we saw a lot of entries from industrial designers and computer programmers, the kind of people that you don't normally associate with autism research, and that showed me the value of opening up the field of autism research to other types of scientists and engineers. Okay. Um, what was your favorite exhibit at the technology fair this morning? Well, we had the, um, the GoBug device, which was the, the winner of the technology competition. But uh, frankly, I, I think that uh, we are not even scratching the surface uh, here at MFAR with what technology can do for us. When I look at the kinds of technologies that we are exhibiting here, and, and MFAR is representative of the state of the art in autism science, mm -hmm. and, and I look at the uh, state of the art, for example, in, uh, in audio signal processing or in, you know, that the, uh, the, that the military uses for signal processing, um, when I look at the state of the art in industrial design, say something like, a, like an iPad as an example of good industrial design, we don't have anything like that in, in the world of autism. And, and that shows what a huge opportunity there is for us to bring different kinds of people to bear on this problem and, and bring us some really innovative solutions. So what do you think, uh, what do you hope will happen in the future? I hope that we will get technical people from other disciplines to approach problems like helping autistic people who can't communicate in the ordinary ways to help them communicate easily in the same way that industrial designers and engineers have made it easy to work the complex functions of a modern automobile as compared to all the buttons and gadgets on, say, a 1950s or 60s automobile. Mm -hmm. um, well, a better analogy to, for that might really be to bring to autism therapy the same kind of technological advance that leads to ease of operation that you see in the computer world. You look at the, the PC computers of 20 years ago, and then you look at a modern, uh, modern Mac, and there's just a tremendous difference in usability. And, and that's the kind of thing that helps people who are challenged as well as people who aren't. You know, when we start to use those kinds of skills to help people with disabilities, I think that's very powerful, and I want to see that happen. Uh, could you talk about your, your book that's recently come out? Well, I have a, a new book called uh, Be Different, Look Me in the Eye was uh, published almost four years ago and so many of the people who read that book asked me for more and deeper insights into 
autistic thinking and they asked me to explain how I became successful and how I overcame problems and and they asked me how I turned things that were disabilities into traits that benefited me. So I have written this book Be Different to illustrate that and, and I think Be Different is going to speak very powerfully not just to people with autism but also to their families and, and to the millions of people in this country who are maybe not disabled but they're just geeky and they don't have a clue socially and they're, they suffer from those kinds of challenges even though they're not what you'd call disabled people. What's your, what's your hope for, um, for people like you or me in terms of research? What do you think would benefit us? Because I know there's a lot of focus on uh, helping uh, you know, people who are severely disabled, but uh, I, I guess there's also room for research into uh, higher functioning autism. Well, there is research I into that. We just talked about this uh, peers program and how it's being developed to, uh, to work in, uh, in group sessions with teenagers. And if you read the peers workbook, it's obvious that you and me could benefit from the ideas in peers if we wanted to just read it and go and, and implement them. Actually, I, I think a lot of what's expressed in the peers book are, are ideas that I expressed independently and be different. So another example is the uh, Unstuck curriculum that they're doing at uh, Children's Hospital in D.C. and Ivy Mount School. Sure. That's another program where, like you look at you, you, you get stuck on things and Cubby gets stuck on things. And the Unstuck thing was designed for teenagers, but I can see how it's applicable to all of us too. Of course. Yeah. I, I absolutely can see that. And I actually uh, worked with them to help develop that. Yeah. yeah. And I'm, uh, you know, and I'm writing a forward for it. So oh, with this interview, they should really be like indebted to us big time for that. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, off. All right. Well, thank you so much. Well. And um, I guess we'll do another interview soon. Woof. Awesome. Woof.